dude in Miami that's paying all the money, he may be telling Mario Cristobal how to what plays to call. There is something to be said for what uh, what I think Texas A and M has done. Look, Texas A and M, uh, Texas, Alabama; those are traditionally rich schools with alumni that, that go back generation after generation after generation. And when it comes to the point where now they have the option to use the NIL, it's it's they're not using it the way it was designed for. Now, is that surprising? I don't think that's surprising at all. For high school coaches, it has to be quite possibly the worst thing to manage ever because now you've got just you know all these people knocking down the doors and kids who you know some depending on where you're coaching haven't ever even fathomed the amount of money that are being thrown at these kids um and now they're having to realize that and make adult decisions on where they're going to go before they've even thrown a football before they've even blocked a pass, before they've even made uh, an NCAA tackle, uh, or had to, you know, even defend a pass, it, it, it's it's a very very unique and odd atmosphere, and I I can't imagine anybody at the high school coaching level that feels like this is a positive thing. No, like I said, I, I don't know a coach at any level of football or any sport that that is is for this. Um, you know, I've always been in favor of players making some type of money or going to a restaurant and getting free food, things like that. But as you mentioned, what Texas A&M did with their recruiting class, what Miami's doing now, what Tennessee, you know, it, to me, <clears throat> you don't hear anything coming out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You don't hear anything coming out of Georgia or Ohio State or anything about what kind of money is being thrown at their players. We know their players are getting paid, but they have it under control. I look at it as Miami, who's been irrelevant for a long time, Tennessee, the same. They're just throwing, they're just trying to get into the Twitter world or get the get their name out there that they're throwing all this money around. And like you said, it may happen. And if those kids get it, great. But I'm telling you right now, I, I had somebody on my show a couple weeks ago, because I don't like to do, I call it homework assignment. I had them take the elite 11 quarterbacks for the last 20 years, I think it was, or the 15 years, and I, I wanted them to find out how many of those kids actually started in a college football game. And it was something like 18% of them started yeah, in yeah, the college that football That sounds game. right. That so sounds right. It's that, almost like the promise what, that they make to kids going to the NFL. Like, you know, you can come to, to our university and we will we'll get you to the NFL. But – you know, look, you're talking about 90 plus man rosters in college and you're talking about what, you know, half that in the NFL, like the, the probability of getting from college to the NFL is very low. It seems that it's almost that they're taking the same concept for high school players and promising all this money and making it almost that weird same transition of the, the numbers just don't make sense. And like you said, Shane, what happens if the kid isn't good? If he's not yeah. good and he doesn't translate well to college, what happens after his freshman, sophomore year if, if he hasn't performed to the level of the dollars that these, these, They're being these folks have? Yeah, and now what happens in his junior year? Does he still get well, the money? Is he still getting that, or is that is that all of a sudden gone because he didn't meet a certain expectation? Think about this scenario. If you guys had your own little collective and coach at whatever university said, hey, that quarterback or that running back at y'all's local high school, we really want him. So your collective puts together whatever deal to get him to go to that school, and then he never plays a down. Your little collective is going to say, hey, coach, you wanted this guy. We just forked over this amount of money. Our guy needs to play or else. I mean, think about it. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. So that's yeah, the, so that kind of sparks the a leverage point. on the, the leverage on the rosters is is that's something I have yeah, thought about. That, yeah, very, that very, kind very of sparks point. like a little mafia style type of football, right? Be like what you well, just said. Think Shane. about think about think about the Auburn Tigers for the last you know, people say their boosters have been running the administration there, you know. You saw what happened with Brian Harson this past year. I mean, think about it. I mean, it could happen at some school, but I mean, because these guys are going to be like, look, you wanted us to go out and do whatever we could 
from a NIL standpoint, because the schools can't pay the money. It has to come from elsewhere. Right. We, we, you wanted this guy. He's sitting on the bench, and we just forked over this amount of money. We're not going to go give money for another player. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's all about the return on the investment. And I, I just – I don't know. They, they don't – you know, I, you hear what Lane Kiffin says. I, I agree with everything Lane said when he was at SEC Media Days. So it, it, it to me it could be where the the coach is now going to be just a puppet in a sense, right? Because the guys that are paying the money, they're the ones that are making the calls from the sidelines, whether it's the right move or not. It's like, look, I invested in this guy to do well. I need my return. Yeah, you're you're right. the, the dude in Miami that's paying all the money. He may be telling Mario Cristobal how to what plays to call. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a, that's right. a really good point. I mean, we we've talked about it time and time again, and we have not. I, 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 that, that was the last. Was yeah, that was That's that was amazing. so. Maybe we're, we're we're missing the beat here, but it's a nice fresh take, Shane. I think we we've kind of we've argued about it early on, but now we're kind of starting to, you know, we're, it's just Steve and I kind of arguing with one another. We've learned to appreciate <laughs> it, but it's nice to kind of get a different perspective on it. Of look, here's the negatives that are going to come from it, and that those are some, those are some solid points. Appreciate well. it.